we should do this show. Yeah. Uh, are you mad at me? <laughs> you a little mad at me? Very yeah. Mad. You're very mad at me. Mad. I mean, here's the good news is it's not just bad because it's dirty. It's also bad. Hey, watch it! Welcome to Hate Watching with Dan and Tony. I'm Dan. I'm Tony. And on this show, we watch a movie. Uh, it's usually a movie that someone smart picks like me. And then there's the times that Hold we on, let... It's half the time it's a movie that someone smart picks. So half the shows are picked by me anyhow. You can't just <laughs> pretend this is a one-off. So one of us picks a movie. And then we watch the movie separately mm. because... Tony yeah. and I haven't seen. How long has it been since we've seen each other? We're in not person? really friends. So I, I don't, Dan. I don't know. It's been a long time. Unless, you, unless you live on my street and walk a dog, I probably I have don't. not seen you in person. I don't do either of those things. I would pandemic. walk my cat if he would let me, though. But he doesn't do well in the harness. We did see Sukate one time. That was it. We did see Sukate one time. You guys, did you go to her? Yeah, we went to Wow. Wow, Sue Kate. Very lucky. We met Sue Kate at, uh, at Bob's Big Boy. So, yeah. And, oh, I do I do love a big boy. And Todd came out last year or the year before. Maybe last year Todd came out. He stayed with you, right? Yeah, so Todd was out here last year right at this this weekend because it's wonderful. Yeah, I weekend. guess I just don't get invited is the answer, everybody. Jeez Louise. Yeah, we got it. We gotta do something. One time, one time Dan was like, hey, we should get pie together. And then oh. they never got pie with me. Yeah, so we'll have to do something. Okay, the, we'll get the, notwithstanding. <laughs> um, oh, if you like our show, give us a thumbs up or leave a comment or subscribe. I did it the first. best, the perfect time to shout that out is right after we have a personal conversation yes, on the podcast. Big personal conversation. That's um, great. Okay. Oh, someone was very critical of you because you you left the Tarzan in the last the Green Hornet video. It said the Legend of Tarzan at the bottom. God damn it! So he was very critical. Who was it, Todd? <laughs> no, I don't know who it was. The guy seemed to know who I was, so I'm not sure who it was. And he wasn't really. Well, you probably shouldn't say that if they knew who you are. Dan knows who you are. Don't worry. He's just joking. I was going to blame you really hard, but I didn't. And then he was like, I was just joking. I was like, you probably weren't. Probably, I, listen, I posted that late joke. anyhow. That was a whole day late. I, I'm way off my game right yeah. now. I got to get back on track. So let me officially apologize to everyone out there. I've been a little loosey-goosey for the past three weeks, but we're back Tony, on it today. Tony, Tony's back. I'm back, baby. Bucky Larson bringing it home. That's the movie we're watching. Bucky Larson, was it Born to Stardom? Born to be a star. <laughs> Born to be a star. This is a movie Tony picked. Why don't you tell us why you picked a movie like this, Tony? Well, I told you I picked it, and uh, Nick Swartzen's been on my oh, mind lately yeah. because he had a meltdown on stage. I hope he's okay. We're sending him love and that he gets you know some probably help that he needs. That would be great. <laughs> but he was on my mind, and I was like, what movies did he ever do? It turns out not a lot of movies that he stars in. This is the, I think this is the only one he started. <laughs> and f for good reason. Uh, and I, I, had, I definitely saw this. Like I 100 percent I saw this when it came out. I do not I did not remember it. I didn't I remembered the you know the bare bones sure, was like sure. he's a porn star and it was a gross comedy. That could be fun to watch. It's not. It's not that fun to watch, it turns out. I, it's also not that gross, Dan. Well, we're gonna talk about that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I had watched one scene from this movie, the scene on purpose? I, I guess it must have been on TV, okay. and I was like, I'll watch a scene of this. And then I watched the scene, and I was like, huh. And <laughs> the amazing thing is huh. I, I watched the wrong scene to watch before you watch this movie, because then you think oh. the movie is going to be like that scene, but the movie is very different from that scene. The scene I watched was the where they shoot the porno scene in – oh, mm -hmm. uh, explicit warning – this, is, yeah. this one's not for the children. No, this is this is a dirty episode. It's a dirty episode. The dirty, the dirty episode. Um, there where, you go. Where they're making the 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 film in the ice cream parlor, and oh, then yeah? he you know does his thing, and and I was like, oh okay, then we're, we're this good. This movie's gonna go for it. Because then I read the yeah. reviews, and the reviews are all like, this movie's hilarious. Ah, da, da, da. and then the other ones yeah. are like, this movie is a zero. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to kill myself. Well, the truth <laughs> of this matter is. This movie's 
neither of those things. It a hundred percent. Yeah, it's, it's well, it's it's not the the intense gross out movie that I was hoping it would be, and it's yeah, and it's me not, neither. It's not even a movie. It's no, it's not a movie, <laughs> and it's definitely not a comedy. Uh, it's not funny. Let's let's be very clear. So here's what here's what I'll say, Dan. So back in like my college days, you know, we used to love a national lampoons. Sure. So they made some like real movies like Christmas Vacation. Right. But Mm -hmm. then they also did their low budget sex comedies. You know, your dorm days, your um, I can't remember all the names, but, uh, you know, there's some really good stuff where it's just like low class. They're they're relatively funny. A lot of naked ladies, you know, like that sort of thing. And I thought that that's what this movie was going to be like a sex comedy. Yeah, it's not. It's not, it's not that at all. I don't know what it is, but it's not that. Uh, and I was super disappointed. This is a movie that I mean, I guess it's uh, it's Nick and Adam Sandler. And I think one other guy I, I guess. wrote this movie. Yeah, I don't and know if I buy that. But. It, it is really devoid of jokes. Like, yep, there's just like there's no jokes. You're like, where's yeah. where's the jokes? And and so you're like, oh, we're going to set up these really gross situations humiliating right. situations embarrassing and situations out of that. and and people are going to go off on people and yada 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 and you're just like nope doesn't happen it doesn't I, I don't i don't get it yeah this movie's like steven dorf telling one story and you're like well that was a story and not even a funny story it's, it's like, just I, it's just a fact it's just kind of what happened to him yeah and nobody punched it up that nothing feels like it's punched up in these kind of movies and yet it looks like a movie. The soundtrack is the sound- is really good. They spent the money on the soundtrack. Soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Soundtrack like, and the and the the actors, you're like, wow, okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> is this like a pity pr- I, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be mean today, but like is this a pity project? Was Adam just like, "Hey, I've got lots of money. You can make whatever movie you want and we'll just make it look good." Well, it's interesting you say that because there was like some of I think that 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 aforementioned ice cream parlor scene. I was listening right. to yep. the sound, and it sounds like they they didn't do anything with it. They just were like, "Okay, let's mic a couple people," and and you're done, and we're done. Like they did yeah. not like take this into the studio afterwards and go, "Let's let's polish this up." And they, it sounds like they just sort of did it, and they sort of went like, "Well, here it is, maybe." Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird, you know. <laughs> it's definitely weird. I mean, and Adam Sandler, highest paid person in Hollywood this year or last year. Last year? What did he do last year? It doesn't matter what he does. When? <laughs> okay, it matters to me. When was Uncut Gems? Was that two years oh, ago? It was multiple years ago, yeah. A couple a years? Ago. All right. But he, it's a wild he, movie. he just produces and, you know, he just, he's making all this money off of whatever. And, you know, I'm sure Netflix just keeps, you know, sending the dump truck of money to his house. And it, yeah, he got there because of this kind of garbage movie. No, hold on. I, I as a, a, a happy Madison defender here, I'm, you know, I'm the guy that watched uh, International Memoirs of Assassin, whatever the hell that movie with Kevin James. I watched that movie. I watched the the David Spade movie where he's got like an ex girlfriend. I don't know. I watch all of the movie. I don't remember any of them, but I watched all of them. Yeah. This movie is not those. Those movies have jokes. They have story. They they are at least a movie. You can they're they're not good movies, but they are at least a movie. This is something different, Dan. This is worse. This oh, is yeah. worse than all those things. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, is there? I mean, there, there's maybe more of a commitment in ways. But is this movie any better than Pixels? Well, do you bet it's not better than it's worse than pixels? It's way, way, way worse than pixels. I don't know, man. Pixels are really pixels? bad. Pixels, come on. Pixels had some funny moments. Um, yeah, okay. I don't remember the movie, but like <laughs> the the creator of Pac Man was in it, right? And he was funny for a minute, right? I'm pretty sure it was so. Well, that, this this movie does have one benefit: is Adam Sandler's not in it trying to be funny. Whoa, shots fired at poor Adam. 
Uh, That's listen, true. He, he had some hits. When Adam Sandler puts himself in a movie, he does allow jokes in there. He does not pull them off. And yeah, he's not sure. funny with them, but he does a lot. He he makes sure that there are there are joke constructs laying around him. Dead. Now, I'm sure we talked about this throughout our our years here together. Do you like any Adam Sandler movies? Do you like the classics? I like Happy f- Gilmore, Billy Madison, Little Nicky. Didn't we watch? I think I watched the 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 Water Boy. Water Boy, sure. It wasn't, wasn't good. And I, I like, is better. I watched uh, Fifty First Dates. Like I, I love Fifty First Dates. Around Cute when it came movie. out, cute movie, and I enjoyed yeah. it. I was like, oh, yeah. here's a thing that he could do. And then he just he slips back into that other stuff, and you're just like, Turkey, you know, they're like Jerry Lewis, but without the 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 preciseness. You know, Jerry Lewis. Sure. Whatever you want to say about sure. Jerry Lewis is he worked his ass off and he crafted gags and he wor- he he made it happen. Just These like movies, Nick Swartzen did in this movie. Nick Swartzen. His movies just they just feel so lazy. And this feels even this feels even lazier, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so like, you know what's a good comparison is um that Halloween movie. Hubie Halloween. Because yep. that's also a, a character that was all terrible choices, right? <laughs> like yep. just like the B side <laughs> to the water boy. Yeah, water boy B sides. Um I still enjoy that movie more than I enjoyed this. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, because there's at least at least some people are in there trying and and right. they make a, the occasional decent choice. And like, why is Christina Ricci in this movie? How? Because she why? needed to get paid for a movie. Did she? Uh, yeah. Is that yeah. how desperate she was at the time? Because that breaks my heart. Because she's a very talented actor. Yeah. And she's done some very interesting things. Like, yeah. I'm not saying everything she ever did was a hit, but she she made choices. She took wild swings. She did some stuff that's out of the box. And then what are you doing in this movie? Well, I mean, breaks that, my heart. that's the other thing is you get on that Adam Sandler train and, you know, you I mean, Steve Buscemi's in a bunch of these Adam Sandler movies. And I'm sure. But he's all always great it's bought him a few houses you know a hundred percent a hundred percent uh oh you know big daddy that's a good one i love that movie um mr deeds that's pretty good that foot the foot joke when his foot's dead and he's like hey, go ahead hit it oh great i joke. watched that that was really bad no no it's funny and that's what is that winona Ryder in that one i mean he always gets like yeah, he always gets good actors. That, it's interesting, and that's the thing about all these these movies is they hire very attractive actresses to be party to his very unattractive uh, friends. Yeah. So, and listen, I glass houses, right? Yeah. Let's look at this glass houses here. Keep that in mind when I say what I'm about to say. I buy it when it's Adam. Oh, no, I no, even I never, buy it when no. it's Rob Schneider. I, you know, I, I bought it more in this movie than in those movies. No way. There's no way that that's true. He is. This is. He's so unlikable. He's so oh. creepy oh. and so weird to me. It, oh. I, never in a million years. Never. He is like a guy that if a friend of mine brought over for dinner one night, I'd be like, "You need to be careful. He's going to cut you up and eat you." I mean, he's sweet. He's sweet through the he's whole He's not sweet, though. He's just weird. Oh. I don't know. I didn't buy it. I didn't like it. Uh, oh. So we we disagree on that. Okay. I'll take Adam Sandler any day. Bobby Boucher. So we start at the farm. We, we, see, we have a sunshine song going on. We have country images. We have a guy put peanut butter on his dick and then have the goats lick it. So, and here's, here's how I knew... How the it sets up the movie perfectly, yeah. Because you have like a normal scenario. I don't remember what the first thing was, but it was just Doesn't like matter. fields and something happening. And then you have a joke, which is a guy getting pulled over and doing a DUI test, but he was driving a tractor. <laughs> I chuckled. I was like, <laughs> "That's funny," because you know there's nothing to do out there doing the test. And then immediately after what I thought was a cute little joke, they go straight to a guy smearing peanut butter on his nuts for goats. Uh, and I immediately knew. I was like, uh-oh, we're in trouble. We're in big, big trouble here. And yeah. So then we meet Bucky, who has these two 
buck teeth that sometimes look like they're integrated into his mouth. Other times they just look like... Look like they might be taped on to the outside of the bottom lips. (laughs) It's weird. He's working as a bagger in the grocery store. And then, uh, what's his name? Curtis? The uh, booger from... uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Revenge of the Nerds is the boss. And then they get in a fight and he gets fired. And... uh, And it's a super weird scene. Yep. It's not played right <laughs> like the way that nick swartzen is at is like fired it's all just none of it's you know in the same world between the two of them it's really weird and so this old lady thinks that she got him fired because she asked him to bag her groceries and was talking to him and then she like looks at him and she says you are destined for greatness i can tell I really uh, thought that she was going to proposition him and want to have sex with him. That would have been something. You know what I mean? Like, it pro- I would have laughed a little bit. Um, nope. You, you, you are making a, this terrible movie. Yeah. That's we know is going to get very gross and terrible. You need <laughs> to, you need to, well, I mean, ostensibly, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the idea. That's the promise of this movie is yes. that. It's going to be gross. It's a gross out movie. It's a gross out sexual movie. I'm like, this This old lady has to like grab his ass. She has to be propositioning him. She has to be trying to take him home. And it's just like nothing. She's just like, okay, here's the thing. Well, that's the other thing. He has no character arc. He's just this guy no. that is that is pulled magnetically from point A to point B with mm-hmm. nothing ever really happened, you know, with just things happening to him. And him not being affected by them and not changing and not learning and not not being yeah. emotional and not anything. Yep, that is correct. So we really have no idea if Nick Swartzen can act or not. I've got a pretty good idea, Tim. <laughs> the answer is no. All right. So we go home. He's dinner with his parents. Parents are, you know, Midwest stand-up people. We, his dad does this thing about saying that one guy has six toes, but it's a joke. That was – Interesting. I didn't quite understand. I mean, at least it's it seemed almost like a character choice. Like maybe, oh, okay, maybe this guy's going to tell weird jokes. I don't know, but it nothing. <laughs> it doesn't it. come back. It has nothing to do with anything ever. So the one piece of what thing that we're supposed to laugh at in this, well, there's two things. It just we we never get there. And then they're like, after dinner, what are we going to do? We're going to play Yahtzee. Uh, full disclosure. My grandma, my mom, and and me, and sometimes we played Yahtzee every night when we were kids. Oh, when you're kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah when you're kids. Yeah. yeah, me too, when I was kids. Yeah. Also now, because there's Yahtzee apps, so you we play every night. Yeah. We play a little uh, one game of Yahtzee. And my mom, this is a true story. My mom, we used to have little like, electronic Yahtzees. I don't oh. know if you remember those back in like the handheld game days. Sure, the early, sure. Early aughts, as they say. So we would just hang out in my mom's room. We'd play that every night. We'd just compare scores, and then we would go to bed. Yahtzee's the best. Yahtzee's a great game. I love dice games. You know, so, you know, it's kind of like King of the Hill has Boggle. We, this could have led somewhere, but I no. also love Boggle. There's also a great game called uh, Clever. That's so clever. I think it's German. Oh, never heard uh, of great dice game. We play it all the time. You, now, Dan, yes, there's a totally. joke in here, sort of. Where the mom says something like, oh, I know you love the yachts. She shortens Yahtzee to yachts. Sure. And I loved that. And then the next time they say Yahtzee, they say Yahtzee. Yeah. They say yachts one time. Yeah. You can't you can't only say yachts one time. That has to be like their thing. Like, oh, you want to play the yachts? We got a little yachts going. Like, say it more than once. Otherwise, it's nothing. It was not, and and they could have they could have rolled into like a joke or two about you know getting the triple six and filling the inside straight and you know you could have great look at that Dan it's <laughs> playing the yachts it's not that hard yes and is 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 and, and that's what makes you feel like this movie they were just like okay oh yeah we got that take let's let's throw it in the trash it doesn't mean anything because this movie doesn't mean anything yeah that's I mean that's correct it does it feels like. A lot of – so a lot of these movies, like Happy Madison and also like the SNL movies, they, they always feel like 
sketches, right? Like just a a series of sketches that you kind of throw together and try to make a narrative. This doesn't feel like sketches. This feels like someone wrote an idea. It was like brainstorming ideas for sketches and wrote like a premise. And instead of fleshing out the premise, they just kind of like say the premise and then they move on to the next one. Sure. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It was weird. Well, and it's like, the, you know, it's it's the whole thing is we got to get him to Hollywood. We don't really yeah. care about, you know, it's like, well, how do we get him there? Well, he's... He, he, it does feel that way. He, he's going to watch a porno with, that his parents star in. The parents are going to be like this. You know, he's going to... You're destined. Watch the thing. The parents, he's going to go there. He's going to have the stardom. And the movie's going to yeah. end. And you're like, that's the whole movie. There's nothing else... Yeah. Nothing happens in this movie. And that is correct. He doesn't go through anything. He goes through zero. He is a guy. Dan, I don't know. You you live here. I You've do. lived here all your life. I'm from Minnesota. I'm from the Midwest. I am Bucky Larson. That is okay. True. A little bit. Coming to Los Angeles yeah. is a huge culture shock. Yeah. It not, is not to him. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It is my first two years here. I was just like, what the fuck is going on here? Oh, really? And now I'm like a jaded, angry old man. So L.A. did its thing. But he is not affected at all. There's no like, what's going on here? There's nothing. I don't get like that's There are so many jokes that you can make with a guy coming from the Midwest to Los Angeles. And they don't deal with it at all. You it's know, weird. It's interesting because that's the person I am, right? I'm not affected by anything. Sure, sure. And I mean, I've gone to all sorts of places around the world and has anything ever affected me? No, not really. I don't have culture shock. It doesn't affect me. I, You know, I'm like this. I'm just like the world is the way it is. And I'm like another place. I'm like, yep, it's the same world. It's the same world. I mean, it may look different, look sure. prettier or look cooler or look more terrible or whatever. <laughs> LA. But most people, I think, are more like you where it's like I'm used to a thing. When I'm out of that thing, I'm untethered and I bounce around. In this thing, this guy yeah. never becomes untethered. He's he is Which is solid. unbelievable because he is so infantile. Yeah. Like this is the guy that would be shocked by everything. Should be. Should be. Should be. That's yes, what we want to see. Thank and you. that's what we want to see in movies. We want to see yeah. characters affected by characters and the world that they exist in. But nope, he's just like, okay, sure, let's do that. Okay, yeah. sure, let's do that. And then yeah. everything po- everything works out and it's fine. <sighs> yeah. And that's why, why that's, would it work out? This movie shouldn't work out. That, well, that's the well, that's the idea of movies. <laughs> the idea is, you know, I mean, I think uh, I think Kurt Vonnegut says a thing about that is, you know, the the whole idea of a thing is to make a character and then you know kick him in the balls a hundred times, you know, to see what happens. Yeah, hundred percent. He doesn't say yeah. it that way at all, but you know, that's yeah, what he of says. Of course, of course. You no, should... that's classic Vonnegut right there. <laughs> I, that's word for word. You know, and that's the thing. You're supposed to put your character through something. This character goes through nothing. No, everything just everything just works out. What is the tension in this movie? There is none, and that's why. And that's why, yeah. unless you like the the sort of few gross out scenes, you you get nothing out of this movie because then you're like nothing, nothing, nothing gross out scene, nothing, nothing gross out scene. And I did giggle scene. at one of them. Oh but yeah, I giggled a couple times. The couple most times. the t- most of my laughs from this movie come from Kevin Nealon, which we'll get to. Ah, uh, but. I- and I, I don't know. And I'll get to say Kevin Nealon, the thing I hated the most in the movie. No, what are you talking? Okay, we got. I all hate, right, we'll I put a pause Kevin, on that. I hate Kevin Nealon because you don't like negative people. What's the problem, Dan? You know, oh, we'll I, get there. I, he's insincere. I never believe anything he says. Oh, okay. You're saying you hate Kevin Nealon? I hate Kevin Nealon. Yeah. Got it. I can I can respect that a hundred percent. But we'll we'll talk about why I like him in this movie. So he and so he goes next door to his friends instead of playing Yahtzee, and then his friends are like, oh, I found the sixteen millimeter movie theater. We're gonna a movie projector. We're gonna watch nudie movies from the past." And then we find out that Bucky has never whacked off, and so they're all like, "Oh, we're gonna." Not only has he never done it, he's never heard of it. Doesn't make he any sense. He has no idea what it is. He is a grown man. 
Uh, his, I don't know. It's really weird. And the it, whole the whole premise is weird. And if you're setting this up, he has to. These have to be new guys that he's never met that aren't his friends yeah. that are gonna that are gonna bring him in there to humiliate him. Because I mean, are you telling bit. me this is the first time that this these three guys? All they're talking about is <laughs> is masturbation. They have a bunch of names for it. They talk about one guy does it 12 times a day. You're telling me this is the first time they've ever had this conversation with one of their best friends? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. So they, that is the thing they do. They talk, they give all these different names for masturbation. It is your classic list sketch. It is literally the least funny thing in the movie. I mean, it it fights for that spot. There are a lot of really unfunny things in this movie, but uh, it's not good. And these, it's not good. These three dudes are so unfunny. They're not great, right? They're very terrible. Yeah. The yeah yeah they're not good. So they turn on the movie, and it turns out that the movie is of his parents. They made uh, sex movies in the seventies, and so. He's masturbating to it, and then when he realizes it's them, he's unaffected. But at least he stops <laughs> masturbating. I guess. I because well, I was worried that he was going to to you know keep you, going, and that would have been weird. Do you believe he was masturbating, or was he just? Oh no, saying he wasn't. He was no, no, he no, was no, just no, not in real life. I mean, <laughs> do you think the character? No, no, I believe Nick Swartzen was full. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, the character, Bucky Larson, was nowhere near his genitalia. Okay, so he, he wasn't actually actively masturbating. He was just doing no. things and with his hands. and you know that for two reasons. Yeah. One, because the movie tells you that he has a micro penis. Yes. Not to get too crude. But two, he is, when they do a close-up, his hands are at his head. Yeah, He's they, doing this. He's doing this. Which is just insanity. I don't... I don't understand. And the friends are just laughing at him, which is weird because are they bully? Like, I don't know what's happening here. He has to leave this house crying and destroyed. But instead, but instead he <laughs> finds purpose in life. Well, instead, he, he leaves, goes, confronts his parents. His parents are like, it's perfectly fine. That's what we did. And if that's the way that they feel... They would have had the sex talk with him earlier because they're very open and honest and re like they seem very caring. Like they would have he would know what sex is. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Uh, and they said we were going to tell you on your 50th birthday. Oh, did they say that? I don't remember. They that. literally said that. Why? Why? Why would you wait till his 50th birthday? I don't know. What is that? Is is that when you think he's reaching maturity? I don't understand. Doesn't doesn't make any sense. <sighs> so they pull out the box of porno films. They made 86 of them. I don't know what that means. I know. It feels like a lot, though. And so then he's like, oh, OK, this means my destiny is to be a star. I'm going to be a porno star. And his parents are like, yep, you are going to. And so they take him to the bus Gets on the Do they ever talk about why they left the business? I don't remember. They just I think stopped? they did because they kind of said they met some guy on the beach and then he made him do movies and then they made some decision as to why they stopped. It didn't it wasn't funny or didn't mean anything. And right. Like yeah. I feel like they should have had a reason for stopping and then maybe not have been so supportive of Bucky going to do it. You know, maybe add a little drama. You know, I like the idea. Oh, conflict. I like the idea that they're not ashamed Against of what it. they did. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That's no, the no, most interesting yeah. thing about it. But I think they should have. There should have been something. You know, there should have been some. But instead, they're like, "Here you go." He gets on the bus. There's a guy with a pig. He hangs out with the pig. I guess he pulls out. He has a big wad of money, and I'm like, "Oh, well, here we go. Big wad of money. Someone on the bus is going to yeah, see the gonna money. Take advantage. Someone's sure. going to take advantage of him because that has to happen. Because you disadvantage your character. It doesn't have to happen, Dan. Doesn't He's just so lucky that his dad gave him a bunch of money. <laughs> that's that's all we're getting out of that. <sighs> so he gets there. Um, nothing happens. Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, 
goes which by the way yeah. is a scary place i don't care what anyone says i don't i to this day still don't feel super comfortable walking down hollywood boulevard mm. it's full of tourists i get that but it's also full of some seedy people <laughs> that, that are kind of kind of scary and he just immediately sees a porno store goes in the porno store and is like i want to be a star and the guy's like go to the valley He's like, I guess I'll go to the valley. Which is a funny joke. Go to the valley because that's where porn was, from my understanding. And they have. I don't know if it's. I don't think it still is, but I think. It oh, was. it still is. Oh, it still oh, is. Yeah, yeah. Which part of the valley? Because I'm kind of valley adjacent. I, you know, what San, if I just walk on over San Fernando Valley? Yeah, San Fernando. Well, that's because isn't that where I am, or is that not? Where's Glendale? You're in Glendale. That's. I think it's the other way. It's a. Uh, it's uh, west of you. West, so it's the other side yeah, of the hill. Because that's okay. where all the warehouses are, where they, you know, they ship all the tapes. So all the businesses are, the, all the companies are out there. They always I, have. I it. don't know this, but yeah, I love it. I think so. All right, because that's where that kind of business runs, and uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> in the valley. I mean, I mean, who knows now since everything's on the internet? But back in the olden days, that's where they would make the tapes and the DVDs, and their distribution centers sure. would all be out there. And then let's talk about that great joke that he makes, which is he saw a valley in Colorado. And did he miss it? Wow. 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 Yeah, I didn't write that down. You didn't write it down. I wrote it down right there. It's right in my notes. So he walks over to the valley, finds a place called Tony's Famous Diner. Um, Do you want to talk about his Iowa accent now? I have a lot of thoughts on on that because. As I was going through the Groundlings, if you remember, yeah, one of the big things that they say is an accent doesn't make a character. Yes. However, I got yelled at all the time because I can't do a Midwest accent. And they're like, but you're from the Midwest. I was like, yeah, I spent my entire life trying to not do that accent. Yeah. That My entire life was trying to get away from that and to talk like a person that people understand all the time. Yeah. So, uh, it, you know. I don't like that accent in general, but also people don't really have that thick of accent for the most part. Yeah. Like weird. Fargo, bullshit. Absolute bullshit. First of all, Fargo, not even in Minnesota, but the, the movie Fargo, ridiculous. People do not sound like that in Fargo. Fargo is a city, guys. It's a fucking city. Okay, so he goes... Tony's famous diner goes in there looking for stars. The waitress makes fun of him. Then he looks over and he sees Christina Ricci's character, the other waitress, Kathy, who's super attractive. Um, he falls in love with her right there. Um, understandably so. Understandably so. The boss comes out, go clean the bathrooms. And then he's like, he says to her, I'll do it. And she's like, no, no. Well, you're missing a great joke, though, is oh. that the cranky lady went on break and it's her turn to clean the bathrooms. And the boss says something like, she's got a horrible life. She's ugly as shit. Have some compassion. And I was like, what is what is happening? He is. He I also laughed at his some of his lines. He too. was kind of funny. He's yeah, he, he was, was kind of funny. He was a guy from God. What was he from? He was from Hill Street Blues or something. He was from one of the cop shows. Oh, okay. oh no, he was. Okay. I think he was from um, what you call it? Uh, homicide. NYPD. I think he was oh, from all Hom- right. I think he was from Homicide. All right. Um, and then he tells her that he's here to be a star. She's like, okay. And then he, she's leaving after her thing, and she's walking, and then she hears something, and then she goes to the bushes. There he is in the bushes. He's gonna sleep in the bushes. He's eating a big cookie yeah, and he's got a flashlight and he's reading something. I don't remember what he's reading. Yep. I, does it matter? I, I don't know. I don't understand any of this. It's like weird. And so then she's like, okay, come home with me. There's somebody at my that, apartment. That who- wouldn't happen either. No. None of this would happen. First no. of all, no. if you're a no. single woman and you hear something in the bushes in Hollywood, don't go to the bush. Okay. Stay away from the bush. Just walk home, please. So she brings him home or back to her building. And then we get to, uh, oh, he says that he didn't go to high school. Not only did he not go, he says his town didn't have a high school, Dan. It just wasn't an option, apparently. 
Yeah, I don't know why you say that. Why did he say he didn't go to high school? What is that by? Uh, well, she said that she went to school or said something about school, and he's like, oh, you went to high school? And she's like, you didn't? And he says, ah, my town didn't have a high school. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, it's a joke. You know, it's a really funny joke about how uneducated Iowa is. I don't know what that joke is. It doesn't. I don't know what that joke is either. Doesn't make any sense. So her, one of the other people who lives in her apartment complex is Gary, played by Kevin Nealon. He's very creepy. He's hitting on Kathy. And then he shows in money. And so he's all like, okay, you can stay here. Um, yeah. And he's creepy. And we'll just do him now because I didn't write anything else about him in my entire time. Oh my God. He gets, okay. At different times, he gets mad because he thinks that uh, Bucky's eating his food or eating his milk or eating uh, ate one of his grapes. And no, just what? Just, so that's my favorite joke of the movie. That's your favorite joke of the movie. It's my favorite. So at some point, I don't remember what actually happened in the movie, but Nick Swartzen is crying. And he's crying on his couch or something. And Neilan pops up over his shoulder. And he's like, are you crying because you ate one of my grapes? <laughs> like, it's just screaming at him about one grape. And he's like, you're pathetic. You're pathetic. And then he leaves. It was it was the hardest laugh I had in the whole movie because he's crying. And he, <laughs> he says it's about his grape. It's very funny, Dan. Uh, I mean, I if, don't like your face right now. If a comedian had had done that joke and they'd had a character that I believe, sure. okay, maybe. But Kev, sure. Kevin Nealon just has never made me laugh in any. And then he's ever done. the callback to that was also funny because then earlier, you're right. He was mad about Nick Swartz and gonna borrow his milk because he's like, "Whose cereal is that?" And Nick's like, "Oh, I bought it yesterday." He's, Did you buy milk? And Nick says, no, can I borrow some of yours? He's like, no, you fucking can't. Like he screams and he profanity. So then later, once he's making all of his money, Nick Swartz in, he buys a whole refrigerator full of milk. And Kevin Nealon opens it up and he looks at him. He's like, well, where the fuck am I going to put my grapes? Okay, <laughs> it made me laugh. In a real movie, that probably would have been funny to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was funny. So it, it got me through this movie. All right. He wakes up in the morning. He goes to use the bathroom, his bathroom. Kevin Nealon's in the his bathroom taking a poop and yells at him. He's like, That's I right. got another to, great joke. I got to use this bathroom because I wouldn't Why? poop where I was shower. You can't shit where you shower. Great. Okay. Love that. That's a good line. That's a good line. So Bucky leaves. Or, so that's the end of that. And then we see Bucky washing, brushing his teeth in the pool. And Christina Ricci comes out there and she's like, you can't brush your teeth in the pool. And then she points. And there in the pool is, I think, a dead bird and a syringe. Yeah. 23 minutes in, that's my first laugh of the movie. <laughs> I was like, yeah. syringe in the pool. Yeah. It's gross, man. Yeah, it's gross. It's actually gross. <laughs> that's it's way grosser than any of the sexual stuff that happens later uh he finds an actor's wanted flyer he goes to an audition goes into the audition it's for mac and cheese most of the people hate him because he's horrible but the one director guy is like i like this guy and you're like why does he like him why yeah why There's no well, reason. it doesn't make any sense whatsoever and then but like, that's just coming from a guy who's been to hundreds of auditions and no one's ever liked him so see if no one's ever liked tony they're never gonna like they're never gonna like bucky larson uh, so bucky larson they're like action and he drops his pants starts going at it and then this is another laugh i had the woman's like oh my god he's he's putting his finger up his butt or whatever because yeah. the, the, his stupid yeah. friends had told him to do that while he's masturbating and I was like yeah. okay that's gross that's very <laughs> gross the idea that's that gross that he's all doing right. that and they're coming on that they all yell at him he runs away it goes on too long they would no one in that room would allow this to happen that long that's all <laughs> um, boom he runs away the director follows him and is all like, 
I like you, kid. Why did you do that? Right. And then he's like, my parents. It's a little creepy. And they don't capitalize on this, but like, that's a weird thing to happen. And it should be creepier. And if somebody follows him, they have to be following him to exploit him. They a hundred million jillion percent. They can't be following him to help. Try to help him. Because they're genuinely nice people that want to help this poor Iowa farm boy. What's going on here, Dan? Everybody, Bullshit. Everybody in this movie's nice. Like you're in Hollywood. Except for Stephen Dorff. Ah, poor Stephen Dorff. <laughs> so basically this guy's like, oh, you know, he tells him about his parents and he's like, I remember them. I'm going to the biggest porno party in the world. Come with me tonight. What are the odds of that? And then boom, they're in a convertible going to the porno party. He's like, you love the convertible. Stand up. He stands up and he gets bugs in his teeth. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Like, you didn't like the, oh, it's still moving. You didn't like that joke? I mean, it's just, it's so weird. I mean, <laughs> you know why I didn't so. like that jo- those jokes? It's because to me. you've got a million jokes you can make that relate to the situation. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Right? Sure, sure, <laughs> this sure. guy's yeah. a, 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 you know, a farm boy coming to the porno industry. There has to be something there. No, apparently there's not. There's no jokes to make on that, Dan. None at all. So he gets to the party, lots of hot girls. They play the hot mess song. Then we meet Stephen Dorff, who's called Dick Shadow, and he tells a story about how a bee flew into his pants and he dropped his pants and his dick was so large that there was a gigantic shadow, hence his name, yeah. Dick Shadow. And then the bee just flew away, well, so no. it didn't matter. Oh, yeah, sorry. One, one of the guys says, what happened to the bee? And he's like, that doesn't matter. And you're like, wait a second. Why wouldn't that matter? <laughs> this is this is the joke. You, you've set up your joke situation. This is what it's about. <laughs> Everyone's only going to be asking about the stupid bee. The bee. Yep. <laughs> That's the joke. 100%. You've set we up- don't care about your dick. Like, what happened to the bee? Why, why did the bee go in your shorts? Wait a second. What was wait, it looking for? Why, why was it in your shorts? Yeah. I had a bit of honey in there. Don't. You had a bit of honey in your shorts? <laughs> a bit, bit of honey. Don't worry about it. The dick comes out. And what happened the to the bit of honey? Big. Well, hold, hold on, hold <laughs> on. And it's like when you when you take the time uh, to have somebody tell a story in a comedy, you've lost the comedy. Because that story's yeah. not going to be funny if it's delivered by Stephen Dorff. I like Stephen Dorff. He's fine. He's a fine actor. He's not a comedic actor. But he's not doing anything. He's not saying. He's not even saying anything no. funny. So That's true. You have to put him through it. He's he thinks he's the biggest thing in the world. You gotta stick it to him. Yep. It's, yeah. It's comedy. They don't, it's but they don't, comedy. Dan. Don't worry about Do it. Some comedy. <sighs> okay. Okay, there we go. Um boom, boom, boom. They introduce him to Dick Shadow. Dick Shadow's like, let me see what you got. And he pulls down his pants and sees that there's nothing going on there. At the same right. time, Don Johnson tries to get into the party. He's an old time director. They beat him up because I, I, I don't know. Yeah, there's no yep. reason. That's that's the answer. So Dick Shadow takes Bucky up onto the roof, presents has has Bucky to present himself to the world, and they all laugh at him. And he pushes him off into the pool, and then a leather leather boy jumps in there. I'll save him. And, and then it just cuts. And it just cuts. <laughs> Which is very weird. We have a leather boy jumping in to save him. Yep. He has to be in the leather boy's cage. He, something has to happen. You can't. No, nope. nope. we just cut. That's the end of it. As you presume that he saved him, and uh, then they all went about their night. Huh? Did he walk home? Was he embarrassed? Was he affected <laughs> no, in any way by any of he this? He was not. I don't think he even understood what happened, to be honest with you, because it turns out that everyone loves him. So it, it's it doesn't make the scene doesn't make any sense because everyone was laughing at him. And then a day later, he's the porn king. I, I don't know. OK, he goes back to the diner. Uh, Kathy consoles him. Uh, Miles is there. And then he's like, oh, I'm in the porno business. I remember your parents. OK, come to my place and we'll make a porn. And he's like, OK, I'll go to your place and we'll make a porn. <laughs> And he goes yep. there, and there's like this really sleazy girl. <laughs> and then yep. he drops his pants. So then they start the movie. He's using an old thing. He drops, he drops his pants, and then she 
just takes off her sweater and she's she's wearing um a procedure a bra. Yeah. And yeah. then like then lingerie. Then he just starts sh- shooting everywhere. Or sh- he shoots somewhere. He shoot he does one giant shot and makes yeah. noises like a monkey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wait, hold on. Oh, we don't Wait, have to on. dice. Okay, sorry. And then yep, she, sorry. Like just touches her breasts or goes like this, and then he does it again. Yeah. And then the his stuff doesn't get on her, but it gets on somebody's shoe. Shoe, yeah. I think. And then yep. the other one, we don't see where it goes. Nope. And I'm like, wait a second. He just saw a brassiere <laughs> and this happened? Why did this happen? Because, of, I mean, if it's like the first time seeing breasts, okay, may, you got to make the trigger consistent, right? No, no, I wouldn't worry about that. It's just funny that he's doing it. You see, you you're you're confused, Dan. Confused. What's funny is is him going full monkey and and then you know giving his business to random things that we don't see or make jokes out of. Now, That's what's funny. I mean, shouldn't it be like shooting holes in the window and like it, there should be a joke? An eye? There should be a joke about it. I don't I don't know. Maybe they were too scared to make an actual joke. You know, just jokes aren't going to land every time. I'll tell you that right now. No, but but it's just was like this uh, I, I mean it, it I wasn't know. gross. It was just kind of like I don't really but care. That, and that's my thing. The movie it's not that gross. No, it's not gross at all. I it thinks it's gross. Yeah. I think. I think that they think anything sexual is gross. I'm pretty sure. I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, but it's not it's not that gross of a movie. It's just weird. It's just weird. It's just like really weird. Yeah, it's really weird. So that was that was Now it. let me ask you a question, yeah. Dan, because I've been thinking about this for a while now. And You've you know, thinking, twelve hours. Thinking about it. Okay. I can't stop thinking about Bucky Larson. It doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Uh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Wow. His News, trajectory. News so he is uh, a nerdy guy who's who has no ideas about sex. He's so infantile, yeah, right? Never been to high school. So never been to high school. Never met a girl, ostensibly. Ostensibly, uh, never met a girl. <laughs> <laughs> then he's going to the porn industry. Yeah, that's where he's going. And they give him a very small penis. Yes, and the inability to do anything without finishing. Yes. And then they make him the biggest porn star on the planet yes. because of those things. Yes, exactly. It's a movie. What do you mean exactly? <laughs> that those three things don't make sense together. Those, mm-hmm. th- it doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me. Like maybe, uh, maybe. And I was thinking about this. Maybe you could have the first one where he's like this infantile loser, but then he's got a huge dong, which is but he doesn't know how to use it, which is right? What you like think he doesn't. This know. movie would be about yes, right? Because that makes more sense, and yeah. then he could become a huge porn star because he's just like super well endowed, but he's so innocent, you know. So he's non-threatening, yep. but also very well endowed, and the ladies love it. Yep. that would make sense to me. Yep, yep. but. Giving him nothing to work with and then somehow still making him the biggest porn star on the planet. I don't get it. And they explain why that is. At one point, he's, you know, when he becomes super famous, he goes and this one and 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 there oh, all the boy. people are. Oh, we'll do that. We'll do it. In all right. Yeah. Yeah. Put a pin in it. We're coming. All right. I just don't understand the movie. That's all. Don Johnson edits the movie together. It doesn't edit together. Uh, he tells his his nephew that works there, ah, do whatever you want with this shit. I hate it. Uh, he walks Kathy to work. He's like, Kathy, what are your dreams? And her dreams are to be a waitress. And he's like, oh, you've got all your dreams. And she's like, no, I worked at a real place. And then I dropped soup on an old lady. A very bad story that is not yeah. funny that she can't deliver. It was really no. weird. Could anyone deliver that? Dan- it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. She is – let's look at this character real quickly. She is a waitress yeah. who aspires to be a waitress yeah. at a better restaurant. Yeah. And the only thing that's holding her back is that she once spilled hot soup on someone and burned them so badly that they had to be choppered to a burn unit. Where was burn unit, Tony? Oh, I missed that part. Well, where is it? In San Diego. 
in San Diego from Los Angeles. How do you how would anyone deliver that story earnestly, Dan? I don't I don't know. Like and why would you say they had to fly her to San Diego? Like and and we're we're going to we're going to spend 30 seconds talking about comedy. The truth okay, about comedy is if you say something that makes no sense, it has to be coming out of somebody's mouth that makes no sense. If you're having a real person give you information that makes no sense, i.e. They're in L.A. and they're flying to San Diego. That means everyone who understands the difference between L.A. and San Diego will sit there going like, that doesn't make any sense. And you're the serious character that's supposed to make sense. Yes. Now I don't understand what's going on. And you, what you do is you lose the audience. And Tony and I used to perform at the Groundlings. And you'd have 100 people sitting there. And you could watch as the people got lost. As the people pulled away yeah. from the comedians when the comedians said things like that. In an improv, yep. and every, and if if the person standing next to them doesn't immediately say, "Yeah," because only in San Diego, you know, has to say something. All oh, the hospitals yep, in LA were closed the shit because out of, of it. You, you have to justify why that makes sense, and that's how you save the scene. And then everyone in there goes like, "Oh, that guy standing next to the stupid guy just say, you know, said the thing yep. that makes me understand why I do that, and I'm not confused anymore." People do not like being confused. And when you tell them they flew her to San Diego, and it, it's just like it doesn't make any sense. This is your grounded real character. They cannot not they cannot not make sense. Hmm. They cannot not. That's right. Uh, yeah. It's unfortunate. And, it, uh, and this that's what this whole movie does. It just keeps losing you because you're just like, I have no investment in anything. It never had me, Dan. It lost me on yachts. Yeah. As soon as they said Yachts and then Yahtzee, I was done with this movie. You ruined it for me. You know, as opposed to Tony that will stick to the bit forever. I will drill it to death. And you're either gonna you're either gonna come back around and you're gonna love it, or you're just gonna hate me. And I'm I'm fine either way because I'm going down swinging, baby. At least you got at least you got you to feel something. <laughs> That's right. You're gonna feel something. It just may not be very nice. Uh, okay. Uh so Miles goes back to the diner and he says, uh, sorry, you kid, you just, you're not good enough. Bucky goes, I'm cries. Then we do the grape joke. That's, um, oh, that's right. That's the grape joke. Great. It's wonderful. So I guess that's the, that's the end of act two. Now we're going to act three. I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, well, it turns out the, the nephew put the thing on YouTube and it got 3 million views because everyone the men are watching it because they feel better about themselves because he yep. sucks so bad. And then women are liking it because why? It, don't it makes them happier with the person that they're already with. Yeah. Okay. Or something, something like that. It's not, not a way anyone has ever worked. It's one, it does that's not emotions people would have. Two, that's not gonna make them want to watch it because it's what they're clearly saying is he's very unattractive <laughs> and very bad at what he's doing. Why would they want to like that doesn't make any sense? That's not that's not how don't, anything don't works. Don't want to see that. Nope. Don't don't want to see know. that. I don't know, man. Um and his penis is so small, someone says, Does he have a pussy? Because there's nothing there. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Now we're making this. No, so he goes to see this big producer who's there. And for some reason, Stephen Dorff's character is there because they had him for a number of days shooting. And he tries to convince (laughs) this guy to, to invest in the movie because it's doing well. And the guy's like, this is not what I need. This is junk. Or he says, does he have a pussy when he sees the video? Yeah. I was like, yeah. uh, I was like, eh, it's a joke, I guess. It's yeah, I'm sure. But yeah. he needed to Took make a swing. 12 more jokes like that. Sure. There, yeah. there is no, or at least three. Yeah. You know, maybe three jokes. the rule of three, <laughs> at least give us something. Have they ever done the rule? I mean, they've done a couple list things, you know, different names for masturbation that aren't funny and don't escalate. Yeah. Do they ever do, do they ever do that? A thing three times, and I mean well, Kevin the, Nealon over the whole movie. That's right. Does that? That's it. That's the only one that I know. 
And that's why I liked it. I was like, this feels right. This feels really nice. Where the fuck am I going to put my grapes then? Great way to cap it. There Thank it you, Kevin Nealon. Kevin Nealon's like <laughs> writing that in the, the marginalia. <laughs> right. Okay, then what's going to happen? going to add this scene and here. Then Thank what's going to happen? And then what's going to happen? He's like, do we really need to do this, Kevin? Yes. Yes, yes, please, God, well, or I'm I, not doing the I movie. guess I have to respect him. He's the only one that can do comedy in a movie. See, this there terrible. you go. You may, not, you may not think he's very good at it, but, you know, he at least gets it. So now we do the scene in the – we go to a, a – uh, ice cream store we do another scene with him he comes in there the woman shows her breasts and then it takes him a while to do his thing he, she pops which the is very confusing and i thought instantly we're gonna this is this is where we're not instead of him doing it twice we're gonna do three times four times 15 times yep. he doesn't because do it's it. more he doesn't because do it. the first woman in a bra the second woman topless that's better that's you know what i mean ostensibly better so he should just lose his mind but nope it's pretty much the same, and he ends maybe up even less to be honest. Does it twice? One of them goes off and hits an old lady outside. Uh, I don't know what that was about. Yeah, have you ever seen Grandma's Boy? I don't know what that is. It's another one of their gross-out movies, kind of. There's Oof. just uh, Happy Madison. Uh-huh. It's you know, it's it's their group. It's um, it's funnier than this movie. I'll just say that. But uh-huh. they they do. A joke where one of the guys is pleasuring himself in the bathroom. And I th- I can't remember who walks in. I don't know if it's the grandma or something of somebody. And she like walks in, but he can't stop. So he's like, I can't stop masturbating and just like keeps going. It's very funny. And I just am confused on how they can make one movie with funny masturbation jokes. And then this movie – I don't. Are they jokes? No. I, I don't. I guess maybe they're not trying to be funny. Is it, maybe that's maybe it's my fault, and I'm assuming they're trying to make these parts funny. Yeah, and maybe they're not. It's not a movie. Um, maybe, <laughs> it's not a movie. He, sh- okay. he shows this thirty seconds of footage, which I guess is supposedly a movie. I'm not sure how this is a movie or how anybody uh, I mean, can watch it because it's not thirty a seconds. Movie. Yeah, it's not. He shows it to this room of sleazy distributors and then they make fun of him it's not funny yeah and yep. then it's also very slow like they do say jokes but they're all seated in a theater right and it's almost as if they're raising their hand and waiting to be called on to say their joke so there's long pauses of of silence in between jokes it's it's really weird it's really really strange it's uh, so then Kathy and him go on a date. She says that she liked the movie. She said that he was adorable in the movie. I, it's it's bizarre. I don't understand her character. She's super innocent because she also has never uh, done sex. sexual activity. Yeah, right. I don't understand. And that. yet she's like totally fine with him being a quote unquote porn star. And she thinks it's cute that he i I don't know man i don't get it i don't understand and because none of it is well, makes any sense none of them are human beings yeah it's, it's this is a weird movie i can't believe you made us watch this i'm not sure that's how it works tony <laughs> uh keegan michael key comes in and he's like let me get pics with the beaver man because of his teeth i was like okay it's kind of funny yeah he tried I mean, that might have just been him making a joke. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. Because nobody else really does jokes about his teeth that much. Not as much as they should. Not, not as much as they should. But this was like a very blatant teeth joke. And, you know, good good on you. Is this pre-Key and Peel? I, I don't know what the years were. I forgot to write down the years of this movie. I always write it down, but I forgot to write down the movie of this I'll movie. look it up. Uh, and then he gets the hell out of there as quick as he can. He's like, as you should. This done, movie was 2011. I've done my due diligence. Now I can leave. <laughs> Give me my money. I am out of here. Pay me. And, I, you know, no one can get mad at me. Uh, then she's like, your teeth have character. 
And then another guy recognizes him, and he's all like, you're the tiny penis man from the movie, and you made me feel good, and you made my wife happy. Come for a free yeah. meal. And then he's like, oh, and then, oh, your girlfriend wants to be a, a, a waitress. waitress. Oh, come to my place, and <laughs> she can become a waitress. And I'm like, yeah. well, wait a second. Oh, wow, we're going to have a whole thing where she goes there and tries to be a waitress. No, That never happens in the movie. Nope, you don't need it. You can't, All right, it's you can't promise a thing like that and then not put it in the movie. It's just extra character work we don't want to deal with. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> and then there's a pool party, and we find out that he's hired. He's gotten money from the Vietnamese mafia to to do the movie, to distribute. Okay, is that a joke? Nope. Okay. Well, no, it, thought... it would have been a joke if something then happened with it. But instead, sure. instead, the Vietnamese mafia gives them more money and things go well. And then they just yeah. they just buy out the Vietnamese mafia and it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah good, good point. Good when, point. <laughs> when you borrow money from the mafia, something funny Bad things something happen. has to happen. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no, we, that's just how we did it. We just said that. Darn did it. right it is. I guess the joke was him saying, ah, ha, ha, I, I took a risk. <laughs> I took a risk. Bazinga. Um, and then we have a montage of him helping Kathy learn how to waitress again. Uh, uh, uh. I also. Yeah. We forgot to mention this. The reason she says the reason she works at the diner is, quote, no trays. I, have you ever been to a diner where there wasn't a tray? Because I have not. The food always comes on a tray. I mean, if they're delivering, yeah, they use trays. They use trays. I mean, if you're diners. delivering more than two plates, you need a tray, bro. Yeah. Like you're gonna use a tray. I mean, at the height of my game at California Pizza Kitchen, I could probably do one, two, three. I could probably do five plates without a tray. That's it. I wasn't great. <laughs> I mean, just straight up. You know, I wasn't the best waiter in the world. Let's be honest. So, well, <laughs> no comment. Uh, so while they're montaging her learning that, they montage his movies. You know, there's like a silent movie. There's a this movie. There's a that movie. It's like, okay, whatever. The jokes, they're not really jokes. They're just sort of like, let's think of a thing. They're not funny names. One of the easiest jokes to make about porn is funny names. Yeah. Why aren't there any good movie names in this? It's so weird to me. Because then you would have to have someone write those things. So I, I guess he does this in-store signing where all of these middle-class white people are waiting in line to get him to sign at a sleazy thing on Hollywood Boulevard. Would never happen. Oh, no, no. But it gets weirder. Then what does he do next, Tony? Oh, I don't remember what he does. He goes next. on the what Tonight Show. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! Great stuff. He goes, Just like all the porn stars that you see on late night family television. Tonight Show. Uh, then we hit the great thing. And it's one. They do one joke. Like it's not like. They don't even make a thing of it. Again, it's just like he goes on there and ostensibly he did he did well. He made a joke. He's you don't look like a porn star. He's like, oh right, because I'm wearing a sweater. It's a and joke. that's all you see, that was, right? Like it's a joke. They okay. Joke. Jimmy Kimmel's writers, or not Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Fallon's Fallon wrote, yeah. wrote him that joke. They're like, here's a joke you can tell. Yeah, and that's it. And then you're leaving. Like you'll be in the studio for thirty seconds, and you're gone. How happy is Fallon to be in a movie? You know, like does he like not take their calls again after this? I wouldn't take their calls. I uh, I wouldn't have taken it the first time, but that's just me. I mean, they're all friends. Now so. we get the now we get the middle section of the movie, the adult video awards. Yeah, he takes I, her with again. them. He takes takes Kathy. His parents show up. He's seated at the same table as Dick Shadow. She now says that she's his girlfriend, which you're like, oh, wow, that's a big that's step. That's a big up. step that we don't really deal with ever again. Polly Shore does the emceeing. He's very terrible. I was so excited when they said Polly Shore. First of all, I love Polly Shore. He's funny. All right? He's very funny. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah. And they brought him on, and he does zero jokes. Not not a single joke comes out of his mouth. Doesn't make fun of himself. Doesn't make fun of the people. 
uh, just just basically announces awards. That's yep. what they like. Why? Why are you getting Polly Shore to do that? Why? Why? I mean, I'm sure Polly Shore has hosted those awards. <laughs> that's probably true. maybe he really does, and that's why they got him. I don't know. So <sighs> Bucky wins best newcomer. He wins biggest load. He wins biggest bush. He wins everything. And then they um, why? Because that's what they wrote in the movie, I think. So but why, why would you make him? I just don't understand the trajectory of just making him instantly the greatest porn star in the world when he's terrible. Oh, because he he's going to get so high that we're then now then what we're going to see is he's going to no. become a different person and then he's got further to to fall. No, different movie, Dan. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a you're, movie. You're wrong. That's, a that's movie. yeah. That's like an actual character arc. You're you're wrong. Nope. So the the big production the big producer guy's like come I have people you need to meet and he's like okay and we're like oh okay here we go doesn't doesn't show us meeting these people nothing happens with nope. that nope. Dick, nothing at all instead we need to have Dick Shadow talk to Kathy and ask him what magic he has what's his tricks and. Uh, I don't, why would he be intimidated by this ugly weird that's, guy so again that's what mm. i'm saying like shouldn't he have like a huge dong and then that's that's why he's intimidated by this guy because here's the thing here's why the movie doesn't work dan the only reason there's <laughs> only one reason it doesn't work and that's because we get to watch the porn scenes that they shoot yeah. and they're not good so then when he wins the awards i'm like nope he Why? wouldn't win that. Why would he win? He that? wouldn't win any of those things because they're not good. Nobody would like them. Nobody would give him like none of it's good. So it doesn't make sense. The whole movie falls apart. Well, and the whole thing is these movies are not voted on by the woman who's has a boyfriend who has a tiny yeah, they're, penis. They're voted on by the porn industry, which is not going to reward him because we've explained nope. through the whole movie that the porn industry hates him. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That make no sense. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> So he wins everything, and then he wins male performer of the year or something, and there's big something. music. And we go back to the hotel room, and he's gotten her a present, which is a big metal thing, tray that says best waitress in the world. And then she's like, you believe in me? And then we find out she's never had sex. And then they're like, let's have sex. And then he's like, I don't have any. She says, you don't have any protection. So then she <sighs> takes a straw and cuts off. So it's like this long and then melts the tip or something. Does something to I the mean, tip. I mean, I guess, but it feels very dangerous to do that. But and then that's fine. Ostensibly, he puts this thing that is, I mean, I don't know for micro penises. We're talking about micro penises, whatever. I don't know for micro penises. We'll talk about it. Yeah, they can't be that small. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. That's just not. It's just, that's not. Po- it's not human. It's, not human. Yeah, that, that's the quarter of an inch. That's not. Yeah, it, even it, it's just not not human. It's a straw, guys. It's, it's straw. not. It's not possible. I don't understand. I don't understand this joke. And then and then that's. Supposed to but s- is it a joke? Because it works. He's like, ah, it fits. And then they just do it. Yeah. Is there a joke? Uh, I'm sorry, but a thing that is this big <laughs> cannot stimulate a woman. There's just the, the math of the math of what's involved. It can't yep. happen. Uh, I, and and we're all sitting there going like, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. What's happening? What is why is happening? why is this happening? You know, it's all weird. It's like there was a walrus in the room, and she's like, I just had sex with a walrus. You'd just be like, <laughs> No, what? no, <laughs> that didn't happen. No, walrus, no. Uh. He wakes up in the morning, great last night, and then she's like, last night was fun, but I need to explore other options. I'm flying back to L.A. I guess they were in Vegas. Did we know they were in Vegas? I I feel like maybe they said it, but I missed it. I thought they were in L.A. Uh, Yeah, which is, I I don't know. I don't know nothing. So then he goes, he has breakfast with Miles and says, Kathy's gone. And he's like, now you're going to have sex with the girls. And then Dick Shadow is there. He makes fun of him. I'm like, so he goes. What is? Why are you there? I don't. What are you, I don't know. What are you doing there? I don't know. I don't know. Why he was there. They go to his big movie shoot. 
Bucky can't perform. And then Miles goes over there and says, oh, this is all my fault. I told her to leave because you needed space. I don't even know what he says. I, it's dumb. Whatever it is, it was dumb. So he rides off on a horse and he gets, and then we cut to a restaurant and Dick Shadow is there hitting on Kathy for a noble yep. reason. And then he just sort of walks up and's like, I love you. And then Dick Shadow's like, oh, and then he just leaves and then they just leave and there's no confrontation between the two of them. Correct. Yeah. Because, you know, there's no confrontation at all in this movie. And then he, one year later, he owns a steakhouse in Iowa. Which was always his dream. Don't you remember him talking about how he wanted to own a steakhouse? No. No, me neither. And then people both come there because of the great steaks and also because they watched his movies. And then Kev- I guess Kevin Nealon shows up, I think. What is Kevin, Kevin Nealon shows up? I, I, just, I don't know. I don't know either. I'm exhausted. I don't, it's terrible. It doesn't make any sense. It everything just works out, but it doesn't also, even work out. It just it, it's just. I mean, it works out because she's a waitress. She got her dream, and he's like a rich restaurant t- tour. I, I don't know. This is the weirdest movie. This is this might be the weirdest movie we've ever done. It is, and you know what? Not that gross. No. It's not it's I thought it was going to be like a funny gross out that we could make fun of. And it turns out it's just does the movie just doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who wrote this and was like, yeah, this is a movie. There are two scenes where he ejaculates, which you're like, okay, That's it. I mean, that's still not as funny as the one scene from Grandma's Boy that I will remember for my entire life. And that's why I'll never watch that movie is because I don't (laughs) want to remember that for the rest of my life. It's pretty funny, though, Dan. (sighs) Yeah, it's just a weird movie. You're just yeah, it's super. It's super bizarre. This is is I don't know a miss on all levels. Yeah, it's a true miss on all levels. Where you're just yeah. like, how anybody that has made movies and seen movies could sit and they've th- made a bunch of them. Let's be very clear: the people that made this have made a ton of movies. Whether you think they're good or not, th- they've made movies. They didn't write them jokes, and they didn't write them a plot, and they didn't write them a character arc, and they didn't write them really anything to do. And the premise is just so weird. It's super bizarre. It's like yeah. I made a million dollars from selling a 30-second video of, you know, of, of, and it's not about this guy being human. They're like, Wait, this it'll not be f- – we'll make it funny by it not being humiliating. And it's like, no, he would be humiliated. Because the world Especially says that. the way you've built them. Yeah. All the, all the porn distributors sat there and watched it. And they were like, this is humiliating for a human being. That means 99% of the people watching this video will say it is humiliating for the human being. But guess what? It's not. Nope. Because we're going to do the opposite. The world is not the world. Because we decided the world <laughs> is not, not the, the world. world. Yeah. And the, the, the thing that people never realize is... That's the most important thing about comedy. The world being the world. Sure. Because then when, the, you know, we, we watch Dumb and Dumber, right? Those guys live in the world. They yes. get they take all the wrong cues from the world. Yeah. They, they're not successful at the world. They fail upwards in the world. But they still live in the world. You know, the ice forms on them when they ride on a scooter to... Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. That's yes and. What and what there's like a saying. What is the saying, Dan? It's like straight man in a weird world or a weird man in a straight world. I don't have mm-hmm. the words right, mm-hmm. but there's like two yeah. different ways to approach it and this does uh, neither. It does it it invalidates everything. Yeah, yeah, he's supposed to be this weird character in the weird world, and then somehow magically he succeeds, right? But that's yeah. not what happens. Is he's he's this weird guy, and just magical things happen around him, and then and they're not, and then the movie's over. And they're, but they're not things we <laughs> want to see. Nope, nope, sure not. Yeah, so uh, really good stuff. Yeah, good, really great movie. Good job, Tony. Real classic. This is a classic hate watching episode. I can feel it. I'm even going to label it with the correct episode title. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> okay, good. Now we talk about something we like. Um, 
New season of Taskmaster season 17 just dropped yesterday. 17? They do two a year. Wow. They do two a year, but they've been doing it for Still. almost 10 years. So Yeah, wow. So uh, great cast this time. It's going to be a good one. A lot of weird people. Nick Muhammad from, uh, from oh, whatchamacallit's in it. I love him. He's, yeah. He's just a delight. He should be working on the intelligence movie. I don't know what he's doing, doing other things right now. Well, they sh- I think they shoot this like three or four months ago. All right. So that's fine. Uh, Taskmaster, you can watch every episode of all the seasons on YouTube on their special YouTube uh, Taskmaster oh, wow. okay. channel, which everyone is doing. And uh, it's just a delight with people that actually make comedy. So you can watch people do comedy and people be funny. Uh, it sounds overrated. I don't know if I'd like that. Uh, Tony, Tony likes his Nick Swordson. Uh, and, oh, okay, to do yours and then we'll talk about Nick Swordson. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't do any research. Did you do research? Okay, great. I've totally forgot. Uh, so my, I've got a couple of things I need to talk about. So I started watching Tacoma FD. Have you heard of this? It's by uh, some of the guys that did like Super Troopers and oh, okay. Club Dread have, and stuff. It's a, it's a it's a show where I, it's not very good. I don't like oh. it, but I hope somebody likes it. I'm I'm uh, I'm through the first season and I'm starting the second season now. So I, say, I finished. You starting the you're going on to the second season. I don't a show quit. you don't like. I don't quit. Yeah, go, so go I got to make it through. It's only four seasons. I'll spend, get there. Spend your time well. Uh, finished Halo. Oh, two thumbs oh, up. Second, second season's dope. I'm having a great time. Can can I just it's watch the second show. season? Uh, um, yeah, because they do like a recap of the first season of everything you probably need to know. Um, so I think so. I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably do that. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're fine. If you need any, uh, I can let you know. The there's only like one thing you really need to know from the season one, and they do talk about it, but you may not fully understand. I gotta it, watch. You know I gotta do the Expanse at some point. I gotta do that show. I am waiting until I'm done with the book series, uh-huh. so uh, and I'm a slow reader. So you're never so going to watch it. Good. Okay. I'm five. I'm five books through. Oh, good. It's the book series is unreal. Oh, really? It's a it's a ten out of ten. It's my it's my favorite book series. Oh. That and the Dresden Files are the two my two favorite book Ooh, series great. of all time. Uh, and then Dan, we watched Argyle. Not nearly as bad as people are saying it is. It's. I think people oh, good. actually. Oh, good! I'm glad went into it wrong. Oh, I'm so glad that you liked it. It's now we don't have to do it on the show. Yes, we, I don't think we should do it good, on the show good, good, because good. it's a mo- it's crazy. Yeah. Like it's a it's a very silly movie, oh. and I think people wanted it to take itself more serious because it's by the dude that did like Kingsman and stuff. Yeah, and it's just the opposite of that. It's basically making almost making fun of the king like that sort of movie. It's a spy movie that just doesn't take itself too seriously. It's self-referential and it gets too silly and it's about 30 minutes too long. Those are my two complaints. But, you know, it's fine. Oh, also Henry Cavill's hair is just so bad in it. I don't know why they it's too tall for his head and it makes him look weird. It's hard to make Henry Cavill not super attractive, but they tried really hard. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> so Nick Swartzen went and did a show in Colorado. And yes, yes. Went on headliner after 20 minutes. They like took him off. It's it's not a, it's not like Michael Richards where you're like, oh, this guy needs some okay. help. It's like a guy that's like, oh, yeah, he's sort of on something and he just can't. He's like can't quite do it. He he just keeps on setting up the same joke and then never does the joke. Oh no. He's like, oh, I'm gonna do Jason Statham in something something movie. Yeah. Here comes, here comes Jason Statham in this movie. <laughs> I'm getting to it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No good. I see you right there. I'm I'm getting to the thing. Okay, Jason Statham. And you're just like Oh no. So it's it's not <laughs> no. it's not like this guy. You know, needs to be okay, stopped. It's not like depressing where you're like, oh, God, this this guy needs someone rescue him. Yeah. OK, that's good. It's, at least it's like, you know, it's more like, you know, they come out on the stage and put a blanket on him. They're like, OK, <laughs> and come be on. like, OK, come buddy. On, buddy. OK, buddy. On. Try again tomorrow. Yeah, you OK, know, All right, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So it's he, he didn't blow up his career. And yeah. OK, yeah, that's good to so. hear. I mean, Bucky Larson probably did it a long time ago, but yeah. it's fine. Yeah. I used to love like early Nick Swartzen stand up was really great. Oh, um, okay. He had this, you know, he had like this special where he did a joke about how his grandma's weak and, you know, she's always 
shocked at how strong he is. And it, it was really wholesome and, and nice back in the day. I feel like it's not that anymore, probably, but I don't know. Oh, shoot. My, my computer is almost full, so we should probably stop pretty quick. Uh, well, we got to wrap this up anyway. We're going for almost 90 minutes. So so we'll see you later next time, maybe. Wait, what's oh. the movie? Oh, we're going to do... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do The Turning. I don't know what that is. Yeah, okay. You're going to find out. Oh, I'm excited. Great stuff. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Hey, watch it.